Yeah, here we are in, in Dublin Castle, um, which provided the backdrop to the final chapter of the story of a German spy in Ireland um, during the Second World War. And uh, this man's name was Hermann Goetz. Um, even though Ireland was neutral during the, the Second World War, that did not stop Nazi Germany from, from sending spies over here. Um, they mostly sent spies to, um, to spy on, on British troop movements in the north, and, um, but they also tried to, to link up with the IRA to, um, for potential um, attacks or sabotage against British installations wherever they could get them. Um, the most spies that sent over here, they behaved very amateurish, so they were caught after a few days. Um, and the only man who managed to report to Berlin for over a year was this Hermann Goetz. Hermann Goetz was some kind of self-made spy. Um, he fought in the German army in the First World War, got a few medals, and um, in between the wars he, he worked as a lawyer. And what he did was, I don't know, like maybe he, he felt that he didn't do enough for his, his country, whatever. So what he did in 1936 was he, um, he went on holidays to the UK, he took a secretary with him, um, but what he actually did was um, he, he was spying on the RAF Air Force Base um, in Kent. So he went there, took pictures of the planes and, and the buildings and drafted some reports, but no one actually ever told him to do so. Um, was caught, um, sentenced to four years in prison for espionage and returned to Germany in 1939. And what he did then was he went straight away to the German Secret Service, the, um, the so-called Abwehr and volunteered as a spy, more or less. So they, they were at first a bit at odds what to do with this man, because Hermann Goetz was 50 already in 1941, so uh, not the dashing young man you, you may want your spy master to be. However, um, they, they finally gave him um, a position in the, in the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe, um, as a captain, and made his mission um, to go to Ireland and uh, to link up with the IRA. Um, so he was... was um, flown into, into County Meath in early 1941, parachuted down, but uh, he lost his, his radio transmitter while, uh, while parachuting, so he had no way of, of uh, reporting to Berlin or linking up with anybody here. He had a few addresses in Dublin, um, so he made his way on foot um, to Dublin wearing his, his Luftwaffe regalia and his, his World War I medals, and allegedly walked into um, a Garda barracks uh, somewhere in Wicklow and asked for the way to Dublin. Um, but that story may well belong to the, the realm of legend. He made it to Dublin, um, linked up with a few RA contacts he had here, and they moved him to a, to a safe house that was fittingly called Villa Constance um, in the south of Dublin on Temple Lock Road. He was there for a few weeks, met with the IRA, and, and drafted his first reports to Germany, which were not all very nice. Uh, in one of those reports, he compared the, the IRA to, um, to a group of boys playing uh, cowboys and Indians. Later in May 1941, um, this place was tipped off to the guards and they raided Villa Constance. Goetz was able to escape, but they um, got most of his equipment, they got all the money he had with him. Um, they got his World War I medals, which was a really loss for, for, Kurt, uh, for Goetz. And uh, most important, they got the plans for the, the linkage with the IRA, which was called Plan Kathleen. So from then on, Goetz more or less was on the run because he didn't have any any plans, um, he didn't have any, any way to, to report back to Berlin. And he was put up uh, with a few elderly ladies, um, very Republican elderly ladies, um, who were hiding him and, and served him tea and biscuits. Um, and he also made contact with the German ambassador, um, and um, through which he was then, so at least they tried to return him to Germany somehow via occupied France, put him on a boat, um, but that never turned out because the boat had to return two times because of bad weather in the channel. And seemingly he really liked it in, in Dublin because he, he even started dating women and that more or less led to his downfall because in November 19, 1941 um, he was finally apprehended in the house of one of his girlfriends in uh, Clontarf. Um, Hermann Götz was then interned with the other German spies and, and other German soldiers who were um, caught in Ireland before um, and was left in internment for four years until 1945. During the time in, in prison um, he, he seemingly started more and more getting fascinated with, with, with Ireland and he, he even started translating a few of William Butler Yeats stories into German and uh, wrote a few plays on his own. Um, and in 1945, Eamon de Valera granted asylum to, um, to all German spies and soldiers that were still left in Ireland and um, that were uh, willing to stay here. And from, uh, from then on, from 1945 on, Hermann Goetz uh, worked for um, a foundation called Save the German Children which was um, 
collecting money through selling furniture to, to buy food for, for starving children in Germany at the time. Um, but throughout all that time, Hermann Goetz was, was afraid of, of being deported again. Not so much back to Germany, but, but also um, being then handed over to the Russians, who he feared would, would either sentence him to death straight away um, as a spy or move him to, to some kind of gulag or prison camp in, uh, in Siberia. And uh, the last chapter in, in Hermann Goetz's story begins in, uh, in early 1947, here in Dublin Castle, um, because in early 1947, Eamon de Valera revoked um, the asylum that was given to the, the German soldiers in Ireland, um, and all of them, including Hermann Goetz, were interned again. And on the 23rd of May 1947, Hermann Goetz was brought here to Dublin Castle to the Aliens Registration Office, under the pretext that he was just brought here to, um, to prolong his parole, so he would just need to be brought here to, to sign some papers. Um, but what actually happened was, when, when he was brought here, um, he was told, look, um, we've got a plane waiting for you tomorrow and we deport you back to Germany. Uh, and upon hearing this, Hermann Goetz started fumbling with his jacket and um, got a potassium cyanide capsule out of his breast pocket, which he was carrying all the time, seemingly, swallowed it and uh, then died here um, on the, the floor of the registration office in Dublin Castle. And there's a strange ending to, to Hermann Goetz's story. While he was, was interned, he, he had designed his own tombstone so as if he had already prophesied his, his, his own end. Um, and there was a tombstone with, the, I think it had a, a, a sword and sheathed in barbed wire on it. And he was then uh, laid to rest on Dean's Grange Cemetery here in Dublin. And during his funeral, his, his coffin was draped in a, in a hand-stitched swastika flag. And some of the elderly ladies and a few expert Germans who were in Dublin at the time, um, they actually gave the, the German or Hitler salute when the coffin was lowered to the ground. So Hermann Goetz was one of the, the last Germans who was buried with the honors of Nazi Germany.